Hi, and welcome back to the Nebula Sew Along. I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts. We're now in month 12. We have completed putting together our Nebula quilt top, and we have quilted it and bound it, and now it's time to work on our bonus Nebula pillow. I showed this pillow in month one and encouraged you to go ahead and cut out your diamonds that you would use for the pillow along the way as you made your blocks. If you did, great. Go ahead and arrange those diamonds now, cut more if needed. If not, no fear. Go ahead, pull out your scraps and start cutting some diamonds. Use the photo on page 30 of the Nebula Finishing Guide to arrange your diamonds as desired. Then follow the directions on page 31 to begin to assemble diamond units. Follow the directions on page 31 to cut out the background, triangles, diamonds, and half triangles needed to finish the superstar pillow. Once you have those cut and the diamond units pieced, go ahead and lay out your pillow. This is the layout for the sample that I created in your pattern. People have been getting very creative in the Facebook group in their layouts for their Nebula quilt, and it has inspired me to think outside the box for my superstar pillow. So I wanna show you some quick options of ways that you can rearrange your shapes once they're cut. Your piece diamonds are the same size as your cut diamonds. As a result, we can do some fun things. We could switch out and put all of our colored diamonds on the outside. We can do that in a way that keeps all of our greens together, all of our blues together, all of our pinks. Let's see what that looks like. This is one fun option. It creates more of a hollow star. We'd have our cream in the middle and our hollow bright star followed by the rest of our background that still creates a superstar pillow. Another option is we could keep our color placement a little more similar to what we did in Nebula by switching these. That's another fun option. The possibilities are limitless. I really like how this looks, and since my original superstar pillow looks like this, I think that I am going to switch it up and make my second one look like this. The assembly of this project is very similar to the assembly of Nebula itself. We're going to sew these together into six wedges or pizza slices, and that's gonna be done with rows and then sew the rows together, and then we'll have our six pieces and sew our six wedges together. I now have my pillow into my six wedges, and it's time to assemble it together. So the first step is going to be to sew this piece to this piece using the peel up technique linked below. Then I'll go ahead and sew this piece to this piece using the same peel up technique, followed by sewing these two together and these two. My pillow is now in two halves and I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together using the hang pin technique. Now with the arrangement that I came up with, the center intersection is not as essential since it's the same six fabrics but the hang pin technique will be very helpful if you are following the layout that I presented in the book for my original one so that you make sure that your six diamond points all match up in the center of your pillow. Now that I have my pillow top pieced, it's time to go ahead and quilt that. So I'm going to layer and baste this. And with my original, I did some basic stitching in the ditch around um, my diamonds. I could do the same this time, but because of the hollow star look that I have arranged my pieces in this time. I think that I'm going to do some echo quilting inside this star and outside here to make that star pop even more. I've now completed the quilting on my pillow top and it's time to turn it into a pillow. The next step is to trim off the excess batting and backing and that is simply done with a ruler and a rotary cutter. You can use a large square ruler if you have one to make sure this is square, but it's a small enough piece that I feel comfortable just trimming the four sides. So on this side, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm a quarter inch away from my points so that I don't lose those. So line this up. Adjust as needed. Trim. 
and you might have those points already trimmed off. I choose to do that after quilting. It's okay either way, whichever one you are more comfortable with. Come to my other side. Line everything up. And trim. Repeat the top and the bottom as well. Again, keeping myself a quarter inch away from my points. My pillow top is now trimmed. And the next step is to create my backing. Uh, there are different ways to do this. Um, some people uh, choose to do this with a zipper. Um, I have included the simplest way, which is just two pieces. It's an envelope, so you can slide the pillow form in and out. Uh, to make those, cut them the size that it tells you in your pattern. And then you're gonna go ahead and take one long side, fold it under a quarter inch, another quarter of an inch, sew along the length, with a top stitch and you're gonna end up with two pieces that look like this. I have chosen to finish my pillow with a binding. Um, that is something that you can choose to do or not do. I'm gonna show you how to do both right now actually. Um, I think it just gives it a nice um, little finish especially for something like this that is borderless. It kind of creates a miniature border but you have two different ways that you can go about this. So if you want to finish your pillow with no binding, okay, no binding, you are going to start with your pillow itself, right side up, and then you are going to match the two pieces that you top stitched, one up here, and then one down here. Simply pin or clip all the way around. So quarter of an inch, reinforce your corners, flip and you're done. But if you wanna do this with binding, which is how I prefer, instead we're going to assemble our pillow with the right side out. So we are going to start with this piece and then this piece and get them approximately square, the right distance apart, and put your pillow top. And now I'm gonna pick that up, flip it over, and now I will make sure that I line everything up perfectly. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip with Wonder Clips and then I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm going to baste around here um, with a, an eighth inch seam, just some long basting stitches so that these are nice and together before I install my binding. I'm over at my sewing machine and I have set my stitch length to 4.0 and I'm gonna go ahead and baste an eighth of an inch away. And I'm gonna do this all the way around the perimeter of my pillow. I've now finished my basting and flipped my project over to the front and sometimes you'll end up with a little bit extra. Um, sometimes the project shrinks when you quilt it and your backing pieces will overhang and if that happens just go ahead and take a pair of scissors and trim off any excess backing before you add the binding. I'm now ready to add my binding and I'm going to use the leftover binding that I have from my Nebula quilt itself. And I'm just going to lay it out and um, I have some seams and so I'm gonna try and avoid them ending up in the corner. So I'm just gonna kind of lay my binding out in advance to plan where all of my seams will end up. And so I'm going to sew this. I'm gonna switch back to my 2.5 stitch length. Make sure you don't stay on your basting length. And I'm going to start in the middle of one side and I'm gonna sew this on with a quarter inch seam around my quilted pillow top with my backing now attached. stop a quarter inch before my corner, do a little bit of back stitch, take it off. I'm going to leave my threads attached. I'm going to fold 90 degrees so that I have a straight line to where I'm going, fold back onto my piece, and continue. And I did not measure first, and turns out I don't have enough binding. I am short by a couple of an inches. I'm sure this has happened to many of you, so I'm gonna just show you how I fix that pretty quick. I'm just gonna backstitch where I am, remove my piece, 
And in this case, I happen to have more binding made from a different Nebula quilt. If I didn't, I would go ahead and cut another piece of binding. And in this case, looks like they have opposite angles. I'm gonna check the other end. And yep, also still opposite angles. So I'm gonna go ahead and piece this together, but I can't line it up on that angle. So I need to go ahead and cut this at the other angle real quick. I'm just gonna grab a ruler and a little cutting mat. And a rotary cutter. I'm gonna take it from 45 this way to 45 this way. Best intentions of using leftovers doesn't always work out. Sometimes we run a little short and that's okay. We can work our way around this. And in this case, I don't really want my seam to be on the corner, which if I stop um, you, and I use this full length right now, it will. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim back a couple of inches um, since I have plenty of binding in my lap right now. Um, I would rather not have the bulk of being on a corner. So let's see about how far do I got to trim back about to there. So I'm just going to open this up. And of course this would have been easier to know that I had enough binding to start and not have to fidget with adding it on once the binding is partially sewn to my piece, but it's not that hard and things happen. So I'm just going to show you how I go about my problem solving. So now that I have these both at a 45 degree angle, Gonna go ahead and sew them together with a quarter inch seam just as I would normally sew binding strips together. And my iron is not on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my seam roller. If I had my iron on, I could press this um, with my iron, but I'm not gonna turn it on for just this. So I'm gonna just finger press it open and use my seam roller and fold it back on itself. Use my seam roller, take my scissors to trim off these little dog ears and get back to the work of putting my binding onto my pillow. Now made it back to close to where I started. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and I'll show you how I put these together to avoid having any excess bulk here with a nice smooth seam. So I'm going to go ahead and move the starting tail out of the way. The ending tail I just ended up with, going to line that up with my raw edge and open it up. Put my starting tail down and take my pencil and just draw a line. And now I need to add a half an inch for my seam allowance. Go ahead and flip this because it's easier to get this open. Bring back my little mat and my cutter. And you can draw another line and then cut this with scissors if you're uncomfortable using your rotary cutter too close to your piece or you can use your rotary cutter, whatever you're more comfortable with but line this up so that your half inch line is on the line that you drew. Trim off the excess binding. Now we're just gonna go ahead and sew these together just like I did with my little fix a moment ago and then we'll be able to finish the binding. And I ended up with a little pucker. Sometimes that happens um, if I have left a little bit too much fabric there. Um, if that bothers you, you can go ahead and take it out and uh, tighten up the seam a little bit. In this case, that one doesn't really bother me. So the next step is to take this to the back and you can now hand stitch this under the back or machine stitch it. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and machine stitch it. As much as I love hand stitching, pillows get a lot of use. So machine stitching, is good for the longevity of them and I'll have my pillow done quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and clip and I like to clip towards my corner and then I skip my corner and get a couple clips in on either side 
and then I come back to my corner. This is my little trick. I've shown this before, but I'll show it again in case you haven't seen it in a previous video. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this a little bit taut, not too taut, just a little bit taut. And we wanna split the bulk, which means I wanna wrap my side that has bulk first. So I'm gonna wrap this side first. So now I have my bulk, and then I'm gonna wrap this side. And what this does is it makes my bulk even on both sides. If I did this side first, and then this side, you can see all my bulk is over here on the left, not on the right. So by splitting the bulk, it makes a neater, cleaner corner. So I'm gonna repeat that all the way around, and then I'm going to come back to my machine and stitch in the ditch here to finish my pillow. I've completed sewing the binding onto my pillow. And so the last thing to do is grab another pillow form and my pillow is complete. I hope you have enjoyed making your superstar pillow and I hope you also have enjoyed making your nebula quilt. Um, it has been a pleasure to be here with you uh, the last year while we work on all the blocks of our nebula quilt and put it together and make our bonus superstar pillow. And I look forward to being here with you next year uh, to work on more projects. So subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, and I will see you next year.